Hello everyone, Biglossus here and welcome to another video. In this video we're gonna look at a Sanguine Depths plus 14 I did earlier as a Beast Mastery Hunter. Uh, we are in Season 3 of Mythic Plus and we're dealing with the Encrypted Affix right now. For this dungeon I'm playing as a Ventir because the group asked me to play Ventir uh, because we had none and it is quite useful to have one in Sanguine Depths. So that's why I play Ventir for this one. We use the Pouch of the Razor Pregnant as our legendary, because it is a very nice legendary to have. Um, and we, of course, don't have double legendaries yet, so we're running with that one. Um, Alright, so right off the bat, we did a double pull, and then we do this pull. And with this one, you want to go for, well, I think the Ur Relic is currently the way to go. I don't exactly know if it is the best one, um, but we sadly, we killed the Woe Drifter or the woe relic and that one gives us a well there i should have interrupted that you saw the massive burst the woe drifter did a cost and i should have just interrupted it i did not which was pretty bad for me but the woe drifter what it does is he will give you 150 percent movement speed or the woe relic 150 percent movement speed and i think it's 10 or 15 percent damage reduction so this is pretty nice but it is not the best one for dps on the other hand though it is actually uh it can be actually quite good because it also will give you invisibility for the entire duration as long as you're out of combat of course we are currently in combat so you are not invisible otherwise that would be broken as hell but yeah so guys, if this is something that you like, then consider leaving a like and or subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a ton. Also, um, I try to live stream once a week, but because of my work, I am unable to like pinpoint when I'm going to live stream because my, my shift changes. So here I am invisible, by the way. So if you like to see me live stream, then uh, think about clicking the notification thingy. Um, if you do that, then uh, you will know when I go live. I will live stream, by the way, on YouTube and not on Twitch. Because you guys know me from YouTube and otherwise it's going to be difficult for me for you guys to find me. Here we killed the Ur Relic. And what does that do? The Ur Dismantler, he does a frontal cone attack, which you should not just dodge. Uh, or not really a cone, it's just like a big circle in front of him. Uh, but if you kill him, then you will get 10%... Uh, for 10 seconds I think it's 200% CDR so a lot of your cooldowns are instantly like reset or uh, brought to a very low cooldown uh, for example there you saw that my aspect of the wild went from a I think it was about 40 seconds left to maybe 15 seconds so it takes a big chunk of your big cooldowns and if you go for the Ur relic every pool except for the boss pools if you go for the Ur at every pool, then, then you have your like your big cooldowns up for most of the pools, which is quite nice and uh, in damage-wise. Always try to spread out your barb shots, of course, and uh, try to, if you play Ventir, use your uh, Ventir arrow. I don't know what's it called right now. Uh, use that on the highest health target. All right, and now we go into the boss fight. And the boss also spawns these three relics. What uh, what target do you want for the bosses? You want the Vi relic. The Vi relic will give you for one minute, 15% haste. And 15% haste is like a small bloodlust on top of your bloodlust. So here you really want to focus it down, but be careful with the fusion beam. As you could see there, the fusion beam hits very hard if you get hit by it it's a frontal cone it's easily to dodge but here we have our bloodlust and now we have the fi uh, one and so currently i'm running with 98 percent 89 98 english uh 98 haste almost 90 percent so that is very valuable and i uh, highly suggest you go for that one but going on the season things might change and who knows maybe some some bosses or maybe you want to go ur relic all the time i don't know we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes um, 
so this week it's bolstering and explosives and it is boss week so it's like in my opinion one of the shittiest weeks to start start off the season on the other hand this way it only can get better always try to make your distance especially on boss week because the orbs when they explode they deal a lot of damage and yeah well this is a new season so it's a plus 14 which i think is decently it, 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 yeah there are a lot of people who do a lot of higher keys but for me running in pugs uh, it is actually quite an okay level to do i think um, and i don't know what point i was going to make with that oh yeah i was going to say like do your mechanics right where you could in the last season at the end of the season when you did a plus 14 you could easily fill some mechanics and, and not it won't be a real problem here do the mechanics right use your defensive as, as you can see right now i also have my uh, survival of the fittest on because i want that damage reduction to run uh, during that phase because i saw that the healer was struggling so yeah um, here make sure that everyone is in front of you when he charges you of course uh, what i could have done there is just step to the side and turtled and if you have a coordinated group then, then that is really really easy uh, because we do not have a coordinated group and i'm only playing with the um, elemental shaman uh, it's better to either not do it or be very clear about that you're going to do it so yeah For me, it's not really clear what we're going to do, so I'm following the tank here. And as you will see soon, the tank will decide to instantly go back. And um, yeah, I, I assume we would be fighting everything here. But he's going to line of sight them. Uh, but yeah, then the Rexol costs go off and they will actually hit other people as well. So that was a bit awkward. But yeah. So yeah. For some reason they didn't really feel good because we all followed the tank and because we followed the tank um, like a lot of the mobs were very slow on walking in but yeah uh, here focus the explosives uh, usually your tank and healer can manage it or i think they should manage it um, i try to help with them in this run and there are some runs i actually do not help because i think they should do it but this run I'm actually helping them with it. Especially later on in the dungeon. You guys will see a point where it is very dangerous with the explosives. And where I think you should most definitely help them out. Uh, I'm using my cooldowns off CD. I don't see a reason to hold on to them. Uh, try and, and kill these mobs as quickly as you can. So yeah. There we have it. And on to the next pull. Here the Grand Overseer has the highest HP. So use your uh, Venter Arrow on that one. Uh, so you can do your kill shots. And then hopefully you get a proc. So you will get the Pouch of the Race Fragment bleed on all the targets. Uh, but yeah, you have to be lucky with that. Uh, I've read some stuff about like when later on in 9.2. And I will... Soon I will make a guide about BEM uh, in this patch, but I read something about event there being quite strong at the moment. But when like double legendaries hit, uh, event there will fall off. And for me personally, like playing event there right now is it is fun to play, but it is so if if you are lucky, you feel so good. Uh, because like if you have on the pool you have a um, kill shot which which gives the bleed the pouch of the razor fragment bleed it feels so good but if like that proc doesn't come in right off the bat then then yeah you're lagging so far behind on damage already and their night fate just outshines it by so so much but yeah that is that yeah that is the the nature of the beast of course here I was trying to open up the lantern. I tried to do it earlier before those mobs died, but for some reason I couldn't click it. And so I opened it now. 
which is I don't think maybe the best case should be disengaging earlier uh, but yeah I usually do not play this and so I was not on point with it but we got at least one stack and uh, lantern is open for quite a bit still and it is uh, boss weak so these mobs die pretty quickly here what I see is usually tanks do not actually pull all those relics and usually pull only one or two I don't know why I don't know why they are not linked but okay uh, but what happens now is if you don't kill like the third relic so we killed Vi and we killed uh, Ur but if you do not kill Wo then the ad won't spawn you will need to kill all three of them and it is like the the first one that you kill that is the one that you're gonna get here I'm not gonna respawn this chamber sentinel I just rather wait uh, a little second and then and then do this of course always spread out your bleeds spread out your bark shot it is very important now we're starting to burst these guys down I'm always happy when a tank pulls them into a corner like that because this way you can just stand on the opposite side of this area and you'll be fine so yeah someone is the, the tank was tanking the chain without a problem I shouldn't have done that but And this room gets so chaotic. What you want to try is get the Ur Relic. But as you can see it is really chaotic. And yeah. Now you need to be focusing of course the Head Custodian. Uh, but you should also be mindful of that stupid Whirlwind. And the Dirt Cruncher. As you can see there I used Tranquilizing Shot on him. And it is very important that you do that. Because he will hit like a truck. If he is like that, that empire, empowered stuff. So yeah. Then we can kill the Vi. And so now for, for one minute we have the... Uh, what's it called? The 15% haste buff. Here I'm just pumping out all my cooldowns. Uh, I could have hold on to them. Because there is a new pack coming. And as you can see, I still have my kill shot proc, which uh, proc at the end, which was very lucky. So we opened this pool with uh, with an AOE bleed, which is which is nice, and it's a lucky lucky start. But so far, this run is going very smoothly, and this will this will be the case for the well the entire run, to be honest. Sorry about that. So guys, if you are still watching, then consider leaving a like and or subscribing to the channel. It helped me out a ton. And if you have feedback for me, things that I should improve, things that I should do differently, um, please let me know. Also, things that you think that I do uh, all right is also good, because that way I know what I can, uh, what I should be doing, and what I could change, and uh, what I should keep on doing. So, yeah, all that stuff, please. Here we're gonna open this lantern. And as you will see at the end of the dungeon, so far for me personally, like Ventir is not really that much lower. It's a little lower than Night Fae on the DPS, uh, doing overall DPS, but not by that much. So yeah, if if your group needs a Ventir, then consider swapping. Same with Necrolord. Well, Necrolord is a lot lower, but it is really fun. So consider swapping around uh, depending on what the group needs. Because if you have trouble getting into keys, for example, um, then think about if they are asking for a Carrion or asking for a Night Fae or asking Nefgrill or Venter. Then consider that if you master them all, although it might not be the best uh, covenant, if you put into your application that you can play that spec or fulfill that role, then you will way more likely get invited into groups and that can help you out a ton and, and what i usually do is i just sign up and then i'll type like i can do that uh, i can do the covenant for that specific dungeon and then i'll ask the raid or the group leader just before we start like do, do you still need it or do we have someone else in the group who has it and if we don't have anyone else then well 
then uh, I will fulfill that role uh, happily. Um, so here we're running to the lantern, so I'm also booking my way over there. And then for some reason the warrior died and I almost died. Uh, what I should be doing now is pressing survival of the fittest. I did not do that. Uh, what I did is I popped my health potion, which is also okay because I still needed the healing. But I should also be doing that for the damage reduction. There the little ad was not really clustered in this group. And what I did was uh, kick him so his cast would be interrupted and he would walk into the pack so we could easily cleave him down. Uh, so yeah, pay attention to that. These mobs are quite bolstered, so what I should be doing by this one is just using my stun. So, like for example now he, he is throwing research, uh, but he has 5 stacks of bolstering, so I should have just stunned him. Uh, and that would re greatly reduce, well, he wouldn't have done damage, and that would have been way better. Um, also, I'm using my uh, Venter Arrow there, but I used it on the Vestige of Doubt. I should have used it on the Chamber Sentinel. Uh, luckily, the Vestige is not really dying that quickly, and I'm also not focusing him. There, the Chamber Sentinel got his cast off, which gave him his shield, uh, or damage reduction, I think. Uh, and so, what I did is use my Tranquilizing Shell to remove it. And I also awkwardly, very awkwardly, <laughs> disengage from one uh, like one knock up into the next uh, luckily it is boss week and not mob week and so I did not die but it was a bit awkward like this this chain pull is is great if it is not bolstering like, we should have just waited one second before pulling this pack, I think. Uh, we did not. Um, as you can see, I'm still spreading out my barb shots, trying to, to keep them on all the targets as much as I can. Uh, and, and you really want to do that, because this, this will increase your overall DPS by a lot. I'm holding on to my trinket here. Because I want that for the boss fight. And this boss fight, as you will see, will be a struggle. It will be a very hard boss fight to do. Uh, but luckily our, our healer is on point. He's really, yeah, he's playing it perfectly. So yeah. And he's also going in this with not his full mana. Uh, I'm focusing Vi Relic again. And... We want the, the little Bloodlust Haste. And here it is important that although the Vi Relic is up, this fleeting manif manifestation thing needs to die first. It, there is no... In, in no way should you focus something else than that guy. Because uh, the ticking damage that he deals is just so much. So yeah. Here I was very afraid at this point that we would like AoE and we would pull the frenzied ghouls through the through the wall or through the cell door but luckily we did not do that so again on the fleeting manifestation and as you could see survival of the fittest was running there i turtled at the last possible second to to survive the last hit or um, try to survive the last hit and here you can see our warrior is dead the boss has 60 percent health left and the warrior is dead and we do not have a combat dress. Well, we do have a combat dress, but the warrior is lying in a puddle of shit. So uh, we have an engineering dress, so we can't reach him. And yeah, so we're going to do this like four man for most of this fight. Uh, this is a big strain on the healer. Because those fleeting uh, manifestations really need to die here. Uh, so yeah. What I could be doing right now is using Hunter's Mark on Executor Darvel to reduce his damage uh, by a bit and swapping it to the Fleeting Manifestations when they spawn. This is not something that I'm doing, but this is something that I'm learning like watching this back. Uh, here I have two procs of Kill Shelf right off the bat, which is good because that may I can actually start to take down this, this Manifestation quite quickly. But yeah, as you can see, it is really 
it is quite a difficult fight. My Survival of the Fittest is up as well, so if I get Castigation on me, I can use Survival of the Fittest to survive that. And I am aware of this. And here, the Manifestation comes again. And I think I'm, yeah, I'm using my Intimidation there. Because I think, but I'm not sure that if you use Intimidation, like, his damage is, is like, lower. Uh, here I get this, this awkward uh, thing on me. I use my feign death and that way it is actually uh, yeah it stops getting on you I think but I'm not really really sure be always be careful that if someone else has it on them that you do not stack with them because that's very awkward uh, and we just like back battle and we know on which side the like the swirlies on the ground come from so we just dodge them either way and there we have it it was a, a stressful fight but we managed to to take it down uh, pretty cleanly and now we're up to the next part of the dungeon so guys how is your how are your runs going so far in season three of Shadowlands. Do you like the new FX? Do you hate it? How, how do you guys think uh, think it's going? Uh, me personally, I think the encrypted FX could be really fun, but it is also very, very chaotic at the moment. And I don't know how you guys feel about that. That's maybe because we are at the start of this, this uh, Mythic Plus season. But for me, it feels really uh, chaotic. Like, especially the Vi one that just jumps around. And uh, if you do Vi in, for example, Plaguefall. Plaguefall has, especially in the first area, it's a lot of clumped up targets. And Vi jumps all, all, the ra all the way. And it just starts pulling random shit. It's annoying as hell. So, yeah. I, I struggle with that one uh, quite a bit. Uh, and on bosses, I think the, the start of the boss fight is so chaotic as well. And um, also, like, you open the pool, and what do you do? You start bursting, right? We all, all, we all start bursting. Everyone is popping their CDs. And I think it's, it's quite difficult that you... Um, like, it's nice to have the cleave, but, like... Effective damage wise, it is actually not that great This is like for example now. It's really awkward because I don't have really any anything. I only got one That's why I needed the turtle right away normally I would turtle later on in this fight uh, And and when I see that people struggle to to keep up then I will uh, Turtle one and and type that out so other people will know that they can grab more orbs So the next like damage phase is better um, but yeah, now I had to turtle right away because so some people already took everything right in front of me. And otherwise, I would have died. Uh, I got Hunter's Mark on him as well. And so yeah. Here I got one, two, and three. Three is all, all you really need. I decided to get uh, a fourth one. Um, because I don't really know how much damage uh, I will take. This boss, for example... Especially, I think, even on hierarchies, when, when surviving can be a real issue. The, I think it's the Woe Drifter that will give you movement speed, which is okay. But which will give you uh, also damage reduction. And the damage reduction could be could be very valuable here. Uh, there, I leave. I try to leave one for for one of the one of the guys there, the the warrior. And so I got three and I managed to survive this. Um, but it is like, uh, I'm surviving with three, but it is tight. So I have survival of the fittest for the next one. Uh, so to make sure that I survive that one as well. And besides that, this fight is going really, really easily. Um, 
just yeah be careful on where people are going well i, I can't reach that one in time so again three and i su decided to use survival of the fittest on this one to make sure that uh, i survive this uh, although it is really it's difficult for the healer to, to keep it all up and well this dungeon has pretty hard bosses and so i think the healer is doing a great job in making sure that we actually do manage to survive this uh, i'm not holding any cooldowns i'm deciding to just go all out what i could have been doing here is maybe just go for the boss but i rather i rather just play it safe because uh, we have plenty of time and it would have been so dumb if we wiped there uh, because of yeah the burst and yeah i don't want that well here of course after this you do the skip um and yeah we're gonna do that as well But going back to the new FX, I think it's it's actually quite fun. I enjoy playing it, but I think it's hectic. And <coughs> sorry about that. I think it's it's quite hectic, and I hope that uh, it is okay for people to experiment. Like. I hope that later on in the season that we're not getting like those elitists that like decide we need to pick this one and if we don't pick this down one then then we're automatically screwed or something like that. I hope that's not gonna happen. Um, well, we managed to do the skip. Uh, for some reason, the skip it's always always a thing. It has something to do with people potting. For, for boss fights, which is amazing. I should do it. I don't do it because I'm lazy as fuck. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a cheap ass. Luckily, the warrior knows what to do. Knows that to run to the marked place, die there. Instead of just keep on going and drag those mobs in. Because I see that a lot as well. Uh, I usually pog, of course, so... You get uh, some very special people now and again. Alright. So earlier I mentioned explosives. And this is the part. I've did, done this dungeon before. Uh, this week. And this part is the part where you can actually just really wipe. And that is because of explosions. So here. Of course you need to still DPS everything. It is important. But focus on the explosions. Don't give a shit about the rest. The explosions need to die here. And that's what you see me do. I don't really... Uh, it's like not effective damage when I do a Cobra shot on an explosion. Uh, but you really don't want them to all explode. Uh, so yeah. I, I'd rather deal with the explosions here than uh, on any other part of the dungeons. Because I really hate doing the explosions. But yeah. Here it is fairly, fairly important. Oop. Uh, I think the tank could have already pulled that one, but he decided to, to play it safe. And, and to be frank, we have like all the time in the world, so why not play it safe? And we decided to go with the Woe Drifter. I think we did not actually decide it, it just meant like accidentally because i did not see w us picking the the first one i i was not paying attention to it i was paying attention to the uh, to the explosions so yeah but here we get the movement speed which is okay it is the damage reduction which is okay uh, the stealth you don't get because well there's not r like really anything that you can stealth past because you're always in combat so here opening the urn because that's my job and then we just keep on fighting uh, and making sure that the explosions are being dealt with have it i think the tank could have already pulled the dark acolytes by now he's not doing it he's really playing it safe right now uh, 
but yeah that is that is how these runs go uh, we have the urn still open so if we everything we kill right now it gives us a, a nice uh, damage buff and if you kill it at the end like the damage buff like gets reset i think uh, and it keeps being for one minute uh, at the maximum of 10 stacks which is quite nice here i think we're going for the ur relic or at least uh, that is what i think we should be doing um, uh, wait, what am I focusing on? Yeah, we went with the other one. I think I was focusing all of them, which is not so good. But Okay, we got the right one. Giving us a cooldown reduction, which means that I'm also gonna just use my cooldowns here, because I'm gonna get them back fairly quickly as well. Um, like, if you are sitting on your cooldowns, which is a bad thing to do anyway, so if you're a player that thinks I'm gonna hold my cooldowns until the best perf perfect moment, you're not gonna find it, or almost never gonna find it, so don't sit on your cooldowns. But especially with that one, if you are also sitting on your cooldowns, which is a shitty thing to do, then then like double dips into how terrible it is. And that is because um, you are holding your cooldowns and you can get them reset, but you're not getting them reset because you're still holding them. There's, so there's no cooldown to reduce. So by all means, use your cooldowns all the time when you get them, especially as a BM hunter. We got, we have our cooldowns so quickly. Use them all the time. Here, this one, like the Venter arrow was not really a good call. I should not have use them there um, I could have better used them for this pool uh, but yeah I sometimes am a little bit too greedy on using them and like for example this pool now I'm not using it why is that because I know we're gonna do a boss fight soon I actually am using them scratch that I thought that I would hold them I did not actually care about them. Yeah, maybe I should have pulled them. Maybe not. I think I should have pulled them. But yeah. We're using Wild Spirit. We're not using our Trinket here. Uh, and we are bursting this back down. And now we have 8 minutes left for the last boss. Which is uh, a lot of time. And here again you want to go with the Fire Relic. So we're focusing that one. And yeah, I still want to use my Vendir arrow on the the boss and not on the Vi Relic, the Vi Interceptor. And now we just dodge every mechanic easily and, and keep fighting the boss. And that is this dungeon, to be honest. What you can always do on this boss is just uh, when he charges you just make sure that you move because if you move then um, you won't get the the bleed if you are the second one in line that he charges uh, so for example here i just keep on moving and then you see like he dashes to you and then he does his swirl and that's where you get the bleed from so if he dashes you you just walk away he does the swirl and you don't get hit again he dashes to someone else uh, and for, for example now the the healer has two stacks of that that bleed that can actually hurt quite a bit so always be careful with that there i did not move because i was the first one to be charged and i instantly swirled in my uh, what i think so i, I really could not touch that one but okay. There I should not have gotten hit. That was that was bad of me. I was focusing the explosion and I was not like moving uh, in time to actually dodge. Uh, the healer uh, died there. He said that he had a DC, but rewatching this. 
you saw him move towards the towards the barrier uh, just before so he I, you saw him cast and he just moved too late so he did not actually have a DC in my opinion he just was too late but who gives a damn we're not going call it call it out to him um, so now we're getting a bit spicy because the healer died and now the warrior died and yeah it, it gets a, a bit spicy because I don't really want to fail on this one especially because we're doing so good there the healer got hit again uh, so yeah it's the end of the dungeon people are getting maybe tired from the uh, how do you say that in English? I don't know. Uh, but we're making uh, some mistakes, which is not that great. But general call is almost dead, or almost at 50%, which is good. Is there the healer died again? But we got it in time. So yeah, that was the run. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you enjoyed it and watched it all the way to the end, well then, I think you should subscribe uh, to the channel and leave a like. And also click the notification thingy um, just so you know when I go live so you can see me stream on YouTube and uh, you can talk to me and ask me questions and uh, I can talk to you guys, which would, I would think would be really fun. Uh, Damage-wise, I'm gonna pause the video right here. Uh, there we go. Damage-wise, Pouch of the Razor Fragments. This is the most, then Beast Cleave, Barb Shot Dot is uh, high up on the list because we actually spread it out nice and evenly. And of course, Skill Shield is very high because of the resets. So I think this is a, a pretty decent, um, how do you say that? Decent, I don't know guys, sorry. It looks good, I think. I think it looks how it's supposed to do. But yeah, that was the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.